Happy Wednesday, everyone. My name is Yiling Zhang. I'm the Water Resources Regional Specialized Agent in UFIFS Extension Central District. Welcome to the first Water Wednesday in 2022. To kick off for Water Wednesday in a new year, we will start a, a topic about water conservation inside your home. And today um, we have guest speakers. Uh, we have uh, Ms. Luanne Duncan, the Family and the Consumer Sciences Agent in Sumter County, and uh, Mr. Jim Davis. He's the multi-county director in Sumter and Hernando County. So they will join us today and give us some tips about water inside your home. Now let's welcome our guest speakers. Okay, are you seeing the right picture, Yilin? Uh, it's the presenter. Oh, it's not the presenter. Oh, excuse me, it is the presenter view. You need to switch the screen. Yes, okay. Thank you. Thank that you. should do it. Well, thank you for having me today. I look forward to discussing with you. And um, I'm going to start off today, and I want to um, verify that Jim has some real good information to share with you. Um, but to start with, we just want to look at how we use water inside of our homes. Now, this is from Utah, and so the numbers may not be exactly the same in Florida, but overall, the, per the likelihood of the amounts of water we use and the percentages, even though they may be off, you'll see that this picture shows that we use the most water from our toilets. And um, so Jim will be talking more about the toilet and uh, the shower, especially in bathing. We're not sure that um, it's broken down between bathing and showers being combined here. But you can see that the largest percentages are used in our bathrooms. And so that's an area that we really need to pay attention. But I'm also going to talk about some of the areas of the house that um, we need to keep in mind where we might use water, we might waste water, or things that we need to do to keep track of the quality of that water in our home. So one of the first things is if you have to buy a new appliance that you always look for this Energy Star. Energy Star appliances are the ones that are going to be the most savings in water and additional energy savings. So over time, you can see that you can save over a lifetime about just under 4,000 gallons of water by using an Energy Star appliance. Uh, washing machine, uh, about 2,000 gallons per year that you might save. And I do read a lot. I follow a lot of different groups and things on Facebook and different social media just to see what kinds of things people are asking and commenting on. And one of the things that they say a lot is that they really are concerned that their clothes are not getting clean in those new washing machines that don't use very much water. I will admit to you the first time I used one, I wondered, but my clothes are just fine and I like the fact that I'm conserving water and don't have to use as much of it. Um, the toilet, obviously, if you get a newer toilet, you can save almost 16,000 gallons per year. Now that's a lot of water. Using the full washing machine for your clothes or a full dishwasher can save anywhere from 300 to 800 gallons a month. So those are some basic savings, just thinking about what appliances you own. So when you think of everyday habits and what you do, especially in the kitchen, um, do you soak your dishes or do you rinse them off and have to halfway clean them before you put them into a dishwasher? 
it might be better just to scrape those dishes and, and put any debris into the trash directly. And then um, most of the new dishwashers can clean things very well. Now I have had older dishwashers where um, it didn't work very well. I had to have them almost clean to put them in, which really doesn't make sense. If that's the case, I might as well just wash it. Running the dishwasher when it's full um, is, is good. Now, if you live alone or there's only one or two people in your home and it takes three or four days um, to fill a dishwasher, just remember to keep food safety in mind. If, if the dishes have bacteria and even viruses on them, those things can grow in the dishwasher if they have feed. So uh, along with the mold and things that can grow inside that dishwasher. So keep those things in mind and pay close attention and make sure that your dishwasher then is cleaned out or sanitized on a regular basis. And the advanced technology, like I said, it doesn't need as much soaking and cleaning. However, if you put them in there dirty, just remember that they sit there and they do grow things and we do cross-contamination with our food. It, whatever's on one dish may go on to the other one. So um, just keep that in mind, but full dishwashers use less than washing them by hand in a sink full of water. When it comes to doing loads of laundry, once again, we wanna keep that dishwasher or that washing machine full just like we do with the dishwasher. And there's some things to keep in mind though. Colors still do fade and run onto each other. And a matter of fact, as time has gone on over the past 50 years, we have different rules and sometimes the colors are going to fade onto each other even more. Now we've always really tried to go to cold water rather than hot water, that'll help save some energy. And we have a lot of detergents that will work well with cold water. But remember that um, some things, some stains are set by hot water, some things will not come out with cold water. And if you need help with any of those kinds of stain removal things, just remember the extension office is here and we can help you with that too. But once again, like I mentioned earlier, you know, those new models come out with a little bit less water. So sometimes people then put it on a larger load than they need to just to try to get more water in there and you're defeating the purpose a little bit. I put these items up here just because sometimes when we put things in the washing machine, for example, like the cross-contamination that can happen in the dishwasher, you know, one of our dirtiest places in the house is our laundry um, basket and you know the thoughts of putting things that we wash and dry our dishes with in with our underwear and some of those kinds of pieces of laundry you might want to consider using some laundry sanitizer now there are several new ones coming out i believe that oxyclean now has one for a long time the only one i was aware of was a lysol laundry sanitizer that you can add and if you're doing one load together that you might want to use something like that to help sanitize the clothing. Now, um, there are different kinds of color keepers, color catchers. If you wanna put whites in and threads and you don't want everything to turn pink, you might need to do something like this. And these are a little bit of an extra expense that will maybe help save on some water use and typically aren't that expensive if you choose to do a real full load and don't have enough of all one color to do the full load. Now, water softeners, how can they save water? Well, if you have really hard water, one of the things is, is that you might need to use a little bit more water or detergent over time to get things clean. And so, um, you know, especially to rinse things out with to try to get any extra soap. So you might wanna have your water tested and see how much, um, how hard it is and whether or not you really need this. I'm not selling anybody a water softener. It's just something to keep in mind. It can be more work. Also, like at the bottom picture there, a lot of the water softeners use salts and those salts, um, if you don't have a filter for that, that comes out into your diet and may impact your health overall if you have issues with sodium. So keep these things all in mind. And there are so many different kinds of water softeners. If you decide to use one or you feel you need one, make sure that you make um, a good choice and seek information. We can help you find some of that. Um, we used to have 
equipment specialists through the university. We no longer have those, but we can try, still try to help you if you need information to make a decision. Hot water heaters are another issue. Um, we know that in our area, a lot of the new homes that are coming out are coming out with the tankless hot water heaters. And, and that will save a little bit. It really, it heats up the water immediately. I don't have any data on how that compares to water that's heated in the tank and kept there, but I still have a hot water tank in my home and I still have to run it for a little while to get it warm enough. And some of that all depends on how far the tank is away from um, your source, how far is the tank away from the washing machine or the dishwasher. In some places, they talk about running the hot water before you fill your washing machine or before you fill your dishwasher. Um, once again, pay attention to your equipment because in some cases, they can heat the water. I don't know of very many of them that do that. A lot of times if you set it at hot, it's as hot as the water that's gonna come out of the tap, especially in your washing machine, because you have a hose directly to the hot water or directly with the cold water. And so if you set it as a hot water wash, um, it's going to be however long it takes to get from that tank and over. So think about those kinds of things. Um, we can try to, we're trying to get more information to help people with those decisions. It's just remember there is a little bit of a difference. Either type needs to be flushed out at least once a year. Some of the information I read um, re refers us to doing it more than once a year. A lot of this comes down once again to how hard your water is, how many minerals are in your water, and um, how much that might um, cause an issue. I have had experience with hot water heaters that the odor from certain water, if you have a well or even if you have a, you know, just sediment that's in there is going to give you an odor and um, may really shorten the life of the water heater overall. So that's something to keep in mind. It doesn't really have to do with saving water, but <clears throat> if you've shortened the life of your water heater, there's some things to think about here before you go into purchasing a new one. Just because we recommend that you don't set the temperature higher than 140 degrees, some of our UF materials recommend no higher than 120. But then once again, the question comes down to people set it higher so it gets there quicker and hotter. Be careful because that can interfere with the safety of your equipment. And so running for a minute or two to get it hot enough might be what you just have to do to um, ensure the safety. You don't want to have um, the pressure gauge inside that water tank explode and have water everywhere or have problems with that. We don't do a whole lot of insulating these tanks in Florida, but you know we've had some colder weather and having that insulating blanket around it may or may not help save you some money or save on the amount of time that you have to run that water heater before um, you know, you get the hot water, the temperature you want into your kitchen or bathroom or laundry room. Um, another thing when we're looking at water usage is to understand your water bill. Now, most of us, and maybe I'm the one who, the only one who doesn't, but a lot of us see what's the amount and then we pay it, right? But there's some good information that comes on that bill and something to pay attention to. And for example, here is a picture of a, a statement in the water bill that shows how much water is being used. And if you look at this one in June, there was a lot of more water being used than other months, also in April. And so if you can watch that and kind of watch your habits, you might be able to determine ways that maybe you have overspent, um, maybe use more water than you needed to, but that's a tracking, a way to track it. And if you see a big increase in the usage, it's time to check and see if you have leaks or something like that that Jim will be telling you more about. And so one of the things though about your water bill that I really want you to pay attention to is to that it also is based on how much water you use if you have a public water supplier. Obviously, if you have a well, it's a little bit different, but there are things to be concerned about there too. But the amount of water you use is also used to calculate what your charge is for the sewage charges. 
And so keep that in mind that, you know, uh, the more water you're using, the more your sewer charges are also going to be. It isn't based on how much is flushed down there. That doesn't mean you flush more down your toilet because you're not getting charged extra based on that. But one of the things to think about is the fact that the amount of water you use is going to also determine what your sewage costs are. In some cases, they can be up to double the water cost. I have seen some bills in some of our trainings and things in certain areas here in Central Florida where that was the case. Another way is to reuse water. Now, this sounds like a little bit of extra work, and I understand it, but if you want to save some of your bath water, please don't save water any more than 24 hours, and um, you would put it in the back of your toilet, this gray water or used water, um, to flush the toilet. If you're cooking vegetables or something like that and you have extra water, just allow it to cool. There might be some minerals and things in there that you could use to water plants. And then when you wash your fruits and vegetables, once again, I'm not saying save the water that you washed your carrots in to wash your tomatoes. Um, once again, we get into problems with cross-contamination and putting different um, bacteria onto our foods. But if it's going to go in, down the toilet or as a use, there are ways to save money that way. I have even heard of families who have chosen to do where... Um, if it's only wet waste in a toilet, they don't flush it until there's solid waste in the toilet. Now that that's really being a water saver, but at the same time, um, that isn't for everybody either. So before we get into questions, here's some of my resources, but I'm gonna turn it over to Jim because he's got some really good information to share. Jim, it looks good, but we didn't hear you. Okay, good. <laughs> Hold on, let me do that again, sorry. Okay. All right, can you see everything well? Yes, yeah. it looks good. All right, good, all right. Good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Jim Davis. I'm the Multi-County Extension Director for the University of Florida in Sumter Hernando County. So we're just gonna have some very basic information on uh, some tips on saving water indoors. Now, first of all, you know, if you're in Florida, I know some of y'all may be from other states, but for Florida residents, you know, whether you're a native like me or you're, you know, have moved here, uh, some Floridians do not know where our water actually comes from. And so our water actually comes from an aquifer called the Florida aquifer. It's one of the largest, most productive aquifers in the world. And it covers Florida, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina. About 90% of our drinking water comes from this aquifer. Uh, now, we teach a lot about saving water outdoors with irrigation and Florida-friendly landscaping and so on. But, you know, we want to specifically um, teach about how to save water indoors because this is where some people uh, kind of, you know, they're great at saving water outdoors, but indoors they kind of not so great. Now, the average central Floridian use is about 104 gallons per day. Nationwide, it's about 90 according to the EPA. Um, now, what are the things that, one simple thing that you can do to save water, and this is, this is pretty much common sense, is by fixing any leaks. So if you have a kitchen, link, a kitchen sink, um, if that handle is not working correctly, you may think you shut it off, but it may be dripping excessively or just have a steady flow. And you, know, you may have some buildup in there, you may have to have that replaced. So, you know, fixing leaks, it can save a big part, especially with the toilets. Toilets are a big um, water user in the house. So you can save it on average about 10% of your water bill. So you need to um, learn to check for leaks and, you know, toilet leaks, faucet leaks, and 
kitchen, laundry, shower heads, and all that good stuff. So your shower heads, you use about 20% of water is um, use is caused by showering, resulting in about 40 gallons per day. And so the average shower head uses about two and a half gallons per minute. Now there are some water sense labels out there. So this is the one you, know, you saw from Luann. Here's one on the upper right. And this saves about no more than two gallons per minute. Now shower heads, uh, you know, aside from saving water, you can save electricity as well. Um, if every home is retrofitted, we could save about 2.9 billion in utility bills and over 260 billion gallons of water annually, according to the EPA. Now retrofitting is very easy. Shower heads, I like to consider, you know, shower heads the low hanging fruit. It's like in your landscape irrigation, rain sensors. That's easy to replace and will help save some water in the landscape. That's a low hanging fruit uh, to save some water. Shower heads um, are very, very easy to do. And you know, I'm gonna show you a little trick on how to test and see if that shower head is actually water efficient or not. Um, but some, you know, some of the resources that we have available, I know the Yilin put the, uh, the link on there is the Southwest Florida Water Management District. And what Yilin put was the water use calculator. I highly encourage you going to that. It's pretty cool because you can say, okay, I'm gonna take, you know, if I take a, a shower for 30 minutes, you know, okay, now I'm gonna cut that down to five minutes. Well, you can see the appro approximate water savings associated with that. So it's a pretty cool tool to see where you can save some water. And in some areas in Florida, you know, you're paying for water. And so you're gonna save some money. And so I'm going to play this video right now. And Yelin and Luann, it may not have the sound. The sound is really uh, irrelevant. So it's just pretty much the steps. So you're going to need some plumbing tape, a toothbrush. They're putting this towel over there to prevent any scraping on the tool. And that's pretty much it, that's pretty much how it is and how simple it is to do this. And so the, some of the things that that you saw was that they use a towel first of all, like I said, you don't want to um, scratch your appliance there. They use the toothbrush to clean the the threads um, on there. Um, I I would use a little, something a little bit more abrasive than a toothbrush because if it's been sitting there for a while, the toothbrush isn't going to cut it. It's not going to clean it. So you probably need something a little bit more abrasive, maybe like a, a fine wire brush or something like that to get all that gook off there, all that old tape. Anytime when you're dealing with any, you know, um, appliance dealing with indoors or landscape irrigation, you want to always start with a clean surface. Okay. That's very important. So make sure everything is clean and ready to go. And uh, so clean those threads and you apply this tape. And this is simple Teflon tape. It's very cheap, it's pennies. And you wrap this around the threads. And what this basically does, this prevents any leaking. And uh, so this is, a, this is a nice tool that some people don't know about. Some people just put the shower head on there. Um, you know, don't put PVC glue on there for goodness sakes. You know, you'll never get it off. You know, just put this Teflon tape on there, screw it on really tight, and then it's gonna be basically leak free. So, you know, some people ask, well, okay, well, how do I know if my shower head is water efficient? How do I know if my bathroom sink is water efficient? Well, there's simple, there's simple steps. And what you can do is get a measuring cup, you know, make sure it's legible and all that good stuff. Now I'm using this for a bathroom sink. So this measuring cup is quite appropriate, um, quite appropriate for that. If you're doing a shower, you may want to use something a little bit bigger. Okay, so we're going to use this bathroom faucet as our example. You're going to turn on the faucet and okay? you're going to run it for 10 seconds. Then you're going to multiply the water in the container by six to determine the flow rate. 
Okay. So for example, in this one right here, this is my own bathroom sink. I had no idea what it was putting out at the time. So I got a measuring cup. So I got three cups in about 10 and 10 seconds. So convert that, you can go online, figure that out. Three cups is 0 0.18 gallons. Multiply that by six, you get 1.1. 1 .1. Okay, 1.13, 1.1 is fine. 1 1.1 1 .1 gallons per minute. And so that is, in fact, a low flow. Okay. And uh, so you can obviously do that for your shower. Um, and of course, you take the water and you go out there and give your plants a drink and don't, and don't waste it down the sink. So here's an example. Um, and this is just for basically for, for photographic purposes. I just want to make sure you get the point. This is this one right here um, is one I replaced. This is a shower head that I replace uh, in my home. And you can see simply by just screwing in the shower head without the Teflon tape, it, you're gonna get a leak every time, okay? And that leak's gonna add up to, uh, to you know, wasting water. So by simply putting that Teflon tape on there, it's gonna stop that leak, okay? So it works good for inside, works good also for outside irrigation as well. So this, another, you know, another common problem that we see um, inside the house is, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, my, my, my bathroom sink, it doesn't put out enough water and you know, not as much water as it used to be considering now we're assuming this is a water efficient device, right? So, but it's just trickling down. It's not putting out enough water. And so this is an example, okay, of, uh, of what I'm talking about. Okay, this is not that much water coming out of that. A lot less than it originally was doing. So one of the things that happens is, is just like your landscape irrigation, most of your landscape irrigation heads have filters, okay? So if these filters get clogged up, what happens? Doesn't put out enough water, okay? And so that can, that can lead to other irrigation or any landscape problems out there. But the same thing for your indoor appliances. This nozzle right here, okay, this screws off. And sometimes you may have to take a wrench. Sometimes you just, you know, you can use your hand. This one was quite easy. You just use your hand. This is mine, okay? And so it was, wasn't putting out enough water. It's like, oh my gosh, what's going on there? And unscrewed it. <clears throat> and then you see all this nice stuff in there. So this is some buildup that gets in this filter. Pretty nasty, right? So I wasn't too happy with that. Um, not, not too good. So what you need to do is you need to clean this appropriately and put it back on and that water flow would be back to normal. In other cases, what you can do is you can put a, whoops, you can put a faucet aerator on. And these faucet aerators, you can retrofit to your existing sink. Uh, so if you don't, if you have a, you know, bathroom sink that's not water efficient. All you have to do, you know, in most cases, you can just take these faucet aerators, screw it on here, and now you'll have a water efficient device. Okay. So we're looking for about one and a half gallons per minute for your bathrooms, two and a half gallons per minute for your kitchen. That's basically due to um, food safety. Sometimes with these bathroom sinks, you'll get damaged washers as well. Uh, that for those that have them in there, some don't, some do. Uh, that can cause some issues as well. So that's some little, you know, some little tips that I can give you. Uh, we've had several questions in the past. Why isn't my sink putting out enough water? How do I adjust the water flow? That could possibly be the main reason is this buildup um, in these filters, and that needs to be cleaned or replaced, depending how old it is. So these, these faucet aerators are extremely easy to replace. And so I'm gonna quick show this quick video by the EPA. 
And it's kind of like the same steps that you're going to see for the shower. Same kind of tools. So very simple, and you can see they put a towel in the sink. Um, well, you can do that, or you can just, you know, um, pull the little plug there. But either way, you want to do it. They put the towel there just to prevent anything from, you know, being lost. Um, also, you notice they didn't use Teflon tape on the threads, um, and you may be able to get away with that with some bathroom sinks. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use it um, all the time. To, you know, for shower heads, it's definitely advisable for these bathroom sinks. You may, like I said, you may be able to get away with that, but if you screw that in and it's obviously leaking, you know, around these threads and you see a leak, you need to put on Teflon tape, okay? All right, so next we're gonna talk about the, uh, the toilets really quick. Now, leaky toilets can result in about 200 gallons per day, depending, you know, this is the big water waster. Uh, now, a lot of, I'm assuming that most of y'all have the new federal standard, which is 1.6 gallons per flush. I, that's mine. I have it. This is not a new house. This is, you know, 10, 15 years old. And so I have it. Um, you know, the old, the older toilets, they used a lot of water. So they were using about six gallons per flush. Uh, now, some of the newer toilets are 1.28 and even less, which can save about 20%. Um, so, you know, if you're giving, if you need, if it's that time and you need to replace your toilet, you know, go for something like that. And uh, so this will save a lot of water okay? and will also save you some money throughout the year. So any little bit helps. Now with toilets, a lot of times you hear some leaking. Um, you may hear it, you may not. So these little dye tablets you can put in the, the tank. And if you have a leak, um, you'll see that blue dye assuming that you're using blue in the in the uh, in the toilet there so therefore you know it's leaking but a lot of times i'm sure most of y'all have already heard a leaky toilet right so you'll hear it shh, turn on you know you hear that water turn on sometimes it won't turn off sometimes you have to jiggle the handle sometimes you have to flush again okay so now you have to figure out okay well it's leaking now what now now what to do where the problem is and if you're Handy person, you can usually figure this out. If not, you can call a plumber, but you definitely need to get it fixed. Um, sometimes, well, majority of the times, what happens is this flapper down here um, gets old and it doesn't seal correctly. So it's rubber. And so, you know, these things wear out in time. So whenever you don't get a good water seal, you're going to have water entering. So you're going to have that leak. This is how come you have to jiggle a handle, right? Sometimes it doesn't suction correctly. Um, that's usually one of the main, one of the main problems. And, you know, sometimes the handle isn't tightened correctly. Sometimes you may have to go in there and tighten it as well. Sometimes the, the if you have one that has a float ball, has cracks or holes in it because those get worn out in time. Those are all, those are all, you know, potential problems. But like I said, most of the time, this flapper here at the bottom, and I'm gonna show you a video on that as well, uh, is the main problem. And a lot of times you can just replace that flapper. You don't have to replace this whole system, okay? Um, now, whenever you do replace this, it's advisable that you have, okay, this is your handle outside, okay? And it goes through here. There's a little chain that goes to the flapper at the bottom. It, you need to leave about a half an inch slack on that. Don't make it tight. A lot of people, that's another common problem that, that people who are, you know, they're just doing this for the first time. Um, they tend to leave that chain kind of tight. And you'll know it's tight because whenever you start to flush, it seems like it's harder to flush now with a handle. That means the chain is tighter than normal. And what happens is, is that you're gonna, you're gonna press down the handle and you're gonna snap that chain. Yeah, that's, that chain's not very strong. And you will snap that chain. 
and guess what now you got now you have to start well all over probably have to add a few more things to buy at the plumbing store to replace everything so here's another video on how to replace this flapper and like i said this is uh, odds are if you have a leak in the toilet this is going to probably be on the top of the list Always make sure you turn off your water. Very simple. And, uh, you know, if you guys want the, you know, some the links to these videos, just let me or Yila know and we'll send these out um, on how to do this stuff. But that's it's very, it's very simple. So don't let it intimidate you. Now, removing the whole system, eh, it's a little bit more complex. But uh, in general, removing the flapper is very easy. Like I said, that's one of the most common things. Now, we're going to go back. You, need, you know, you obviously want to shut off your water before you do this. And Hopefully all of y'all know where the water shutoff is in your house, um, you know, next to your toilet, for example. Um, so if, you know, if you start to get a flood, if it gets clogged or what, and you get water coming out, um, you know, turn this off, okay? And uh, cause you don't want this on. So this is your water shutoff. And this little scotch plate right here, notice how, now notice how it's secured really well next to the wall a lot of times we see it not it's just it's just hanging there now this has nothing to do with water and door sealing but uh as far as pest management goes because that's my other wheelhouse that is a perfect place for pests to hide if you don't have that secured roaches ants and so on so just make sure that this is secured um and uh, and so on okay and uh, obviously, if you're remolding and stuff like that, make sure that's all secured. Nothing for those little, those little pests to hide. Now, one other thing that I want to talk about. Now, this doesn't apply to all homeowners. Uh, I had one home that was on well. You know, I have a home not right now that we're on city water. So this where this is where it applies to those individuals who uh, using city water and have a water meter out in your house. So first of all, you want to make sure that you locate your meter box. It should be on the easement of your house. It should be metal. Okay. And um, uh, so this is the easement, but it's yours to maintain. Okay. Um, you first of all, number one, find it. It's just like your irrigation valve boxes. Find it. Because if you get a water break in your house, you're going to need to turn it off because that's usually where the water shut off is to your, inside your house is next to this water meter. Okay. So you're going to need to know that really quick. Make sure it's clean. Okay. But testing the water meter, uh, using your water meter will detect any indoor leaks, any silent leaks that, that you may have. So one simple way, well, there's a couple of ways to do this. Okay. So one, one of it is, is turn off all the faucets make sure the water is off in all the house, okay? Including your ice maker. Check the water meter. Go out there and check the water meter. There's a number and wait in about 30 minutes. And if there is a change and there's a leak. Uh, for wells, you can actually hear the pump turn on, okay? If you do this, you're not gonna have a, one out there, but the wells, the wells, you can hear that click and that pump will turn on. Some meters, actually most all new meters now, have this leak indicator. This is right here. It can be red, can be blue, whatever. It can be triangle, it can be square. So if you have a leak, you turn off all the water in your house. If you have a leak, this little meter will go start spinning like crazy. That's going to let you have a That's going to let you know if you have a leak. That's the simplest way to do it. And I say most meters have that now. And if you cannot find a problem, you need to contact a plumber to find that problem for you because that's not only going to lead to water loss, can lead into mold, can lead to insect problems and so on, okay? 
but like I said, you know, my, my main thing I want to get to you on this is to know where your meter box is. I can't stress how important that is. Um, this is a meter box. Now, this is actually mine when I got to it. And, um, <laughs> and uh, so I took a picture of it at the time because uh, I had no idea what my irrigation valve boxes were either uh, when I got married and moved into my wife's house. So I didn't know the meter box. So this is a meter box. You can see the meter right there. And there's a water shutoff in there somewhere. So you actually have to clean all this stuff. Out. Now, can you imagine if you had a water break in your house? And if you have to go out there and turn off the water, because whenever you turn off the water, you have to have this. Okay. You, you're not going to turn off. You're not going to turn it off with your hand. It is almost impossible. You're going to have to use this tool. Now I have one in my garage, so you can get a Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever, Ace, doesn't matter, any home improvement store, have that on standby <laughs> and uh, easily accessible where you know it's at. You put this on there and you torque it and you turn it and it shuts off the water. If you don't have that, you're out of luck, my friends. And uh, it's gonna be very, very hard unless you have a secondary water shut off, okay? So make sure that you clean all this stuff out. Now that secondary water stuff that I was talking about, I have one, I would recommend that you get one if you have not already. And this is basically uh, uh, mine, it's next to my air conditioning unit. It's a ball valve, it's PVC. It's before it gets to, way before it gets to this, okay? So if I have a water break in my house, I can go outside my garage uh, and turn the ball valve and the water is off. Plain and simple, nice and fast. Time is everything. The longer you wait, the more damage you're going to get. And so you may want to consider that in the in the future. If I was to redo it again, of course, it was already there when I got here. But if I was to redo it, I would not have PVC. You still have to put some grease or anything or to turn that ball valve just to turn. Because if you leave it alone and don't turn it, uh, sometimes with the PVC ball valves, you're not going to turn it either. It gets stuck. Um, so I would have a brass fitting if it was up to me. But uh, if that's a nice thing to have <laughs> um, because, um, you know, I had a water break in my house and my neighbor had a water break in their house and they didn't have the tool. So one of my neighbors had to run three or four houses down with the tool so they can turn off the water. Okay. Time is everything. So that's just a little tip I can give you. Water meter box, clean it out, get the tool. You may even want to turn it so that you're familiar with how to do it. Because if you haven't done it before, uh, you don't, you're going you're gonna to have a little, uh, you need a little learning curve with that. So just some other minor tips as we conclude. Water savings tips for the bathroom. Um, you know, while brushing your teeth or shaving, you can turn the water off. Um, avoid using hot water in most cases if you can. Uh, take shorter showers. I'm not five minutes. Um, I'm, you know, I'm getting close to that. I'm definitely not 30 minutes, but um, I take try to shorter showers as much as I can. And obviously, you don't want to take 30, 45 minute showers. Use less water for bathing. You know, about a third full, but you can. You don't need to fill it up all the way up here and be a lake. Uh, so there's some simple tips, and that water use calculator will help you calculate how much water you're going to save for that. Luann probably touched up on some of these things. Only operate the dishwasher, dishwasher when it's full load. Only use, use garbage disposal when it's needed. I really don't like garbage, garbage disposals in the first place because they're a pest magnet. Um, and, you know, use paper towels or napkins to clean food off the place instead of water. It's not going to work for everything, but for a lot of stuff it can. So, I mean, those are some minor tips. Um, only do full loads. Check these hoses. Uh, make sure they're nice and secure. No leaks. Notice I have steel hoses right here. I replace them with the old rubber ones that were on. Um, and that's another tip that I can give you all too. Don't be cheap. Okay. These things are going to last a long time. It, the, the, the better quality material you get, the longer the time it's going to last. Um, so with the rubber flappers, get, get a good one. You know, these steel hoses, get a good one. Don't be cheap about it. Because if you get cheap, and this is where you don't want to be cheap when stuff that when you buy stuff for your house, especially dealing with water, you want the best, okay? And uh, it's going to last a long time. You're going to be very, very happy with it. There's that water calculator that uh, that Yeeling put on. Uh, it's 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 awesome. So uh, go ahead and use that tool. 
And, uh, you know, I'm just going to plug our water management district um, where we are in Hernando and Sumter County, which is the Southwest Florida Water Management District, uh, Swift Mud, as we affectionately call it. And it's watermatters.org. They have a lot of great info on saving water indoors, saving water outdoors. They have free materials. If you live within the district, you get these materials sent to you. Sometimes they have PDFs where you can download it. Anybody can. But, you know, we have the South Florida Management District. We have the, uh, the St. John's and so on. So there's all throughout Florida, we, all the water management districts are, are fantastic. So those are, some, um, those are some minor tips that we can, you know, that you can, um, you know, do in your home. And, uh, you know, I'd be happy if you just do one. You know, that's all it takes is one step and then move forward. So, you know, if you all have any questions, uh, just let us know. And uh, Yilin, thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Jim and Luan. That information was uh, very helpful. And some actually, I think it's a really good reminder as uh, we start a new year. So just put on your checklist or your routine list. Uh, I, I really like the reminder from Jim, it's uh, your water meter box if you haven't cleaned it. Uh, so it's really just get ahead of any accidents happen, just clean it. Because uh, another reminder is also the emergency uh, water shut off uh, valves. Uh, so if you haven't done that for a while, when emergency happens, it's just so hard just to shut it off. Some it's a 360 degree turn, some might be 90 degrees turn, and some maybe pull and push. So you need to figure out which mechanism you used. And uh, other, it's just like Ms. Luan mentioned, Florida water is really hard. So with all the buildup, if you haven't done that in a while, emergency happens, it may take a while for you to make it work. So just a, a really good reminder as your regular household routine. Uh, we are approaching to the end of this uh, webinar, um, but we will, we still have, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please put in the chat box. Uh, so when, we have one question here is for the washing machine. As uh, Ms. Loy mentioned, uh, use, uh, uh, disinfectant to, to clean it. So the question is, any other way to clean it? Any like, like you can take it apart? Not necessarily take apart. The question here is just uh, how to clean the laundry um, a washer. Okay, if you want to clean your washing machine, there are even products just to run it empty and use it. I don't see a reason to do that. Basically, you would just get soapy water and, and wash it down and rinse it. If you want to sanitize it, a sanitizer is usually about a tablespoon of um, like a chlorine bleach to a quart of water. Um, and this is something you make, you use, and then you throw it away. It doesn't keep. So um, that's one way to sanitize without running a whole wash load. Plus, if, you're, if you have, if you think about it, you have this washing machine that doesn't use as much water. It's not going to fill all the way to the top. And you do get some mold growth around the edges. Um, I like to keep my washing machine lid propped open a little bit. I use one of the caps from the soap or the detergent to keep it up so that it doesn't grow mold. But you should clean that on a, you know, a couple times a year at least. And then the little, um, mine has a drawer. Everybody has something different that you might put like softener in or different products. And those usually come out fairly easily. I wouldn't recommend taking apart the washing machine to clean it. But um, just that surface area, it's a good idea to keep it clean. Great. Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. all these tips, how to, how to not just save your water. It's also, I think it's uh, now we, we take uh, more cautious uh, how to keep everything, like just uh, for our healthy lifestyle. That's yes. great tips. Um, and uh, another question that's uh, actually it's for Jim, you mentioned uh, for the emergency valves, uh, it's nothing to do with water, as you mentioned. So if it's not sealed well, it's perfect for pets. So any suggestions how to seal it well? Yeah, the sconce plate. Yeah, you can just take, you can just glue it on there and, uh, and secure it. Um, that's the easiest, that's the easiest way to do it. Um, you just want to make sure that that plate is secure next to that wall. Okay. 
um, that your your crown your your molding also on the bottom. What we've seen in houses is that you know the top may be secure, you know may be sealed, the bottom may not. Um, you just take some caulking. My best friend is caulking, um, and it's amazing how often that I actually have to have it today uh, for for a bathroom issue where these little pests come in because in times ants will chew their way through it in time and you have to seal it again. But this, you know, this caulking, make sure you caulk everything, all these little entry points as much as possible to prevent these pests from coming in. The two big pests that you're gonna have coming in in the bathroom areas are gonna be German cockroach and ants. Most likely it's gonna be ants and they can find their way through the smallest, smallest little holes. Um, so that's the best way, but you know, you can just secure it with any glue or whatever, and, that, and that's good. Maybe put some caulking around it um, so that it's nice and tight and there's nothing, you know, potentially can come in it. Great. So I hope after this presentation, you, are, you will have some caulking handy and fix all the gaps in the house. So thank you again, Jim and Luan, for this uh, informative webinar. So if uh, you have any questions or you are watching the recordings, uh, just uh, leave your question in the comment section. So we will get the answer back to you. So with that, we hope you all have a wonderful Wednesday afternoon and a wonderful 2022. So see you at next Water Wednesday. Bye, thank everyone. You. Thank you, Yilin. Thank you. Bye.